and Kirby returns right back at you. All right, okay. Sorry, that was just my back. Wow, just when I was like, oh, I'm probably going to finish this game tonight, I see 26%. All right, I know it's a little different. There's a little bit more percent here. But, um, yeah, I just don't remember how much game is left. Someone said, Vinny, have you ever dabbled in guitar shredding? No, I never really tried. I don't think I have the dexterity for that. I mean, maybe I could, but I never really received any formal lessons. And, uh, I play guitar probably in, like, a fucked up way. So I don't, yeah, I don't think any shredding is going to be happening. But also, it's it's not the type of guitar soloing I like. I actually... I don't really enjoy shredding. It can work well as, like, a sound, but it's not something I'm... It's not something I get any particular enjoyment from. I just think it's cool. Like, those who can do it, I respect. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. But yeah, it's not... It's never been something I've wanted to emulate or do. Joe, however, ha has, at various times, he's the producer bassist. He plays some lead guitar solos and stuff. Um, he has learned to shred because he grew up in the 80s. So for him, shredding was just, like, what you had to do. Also, thank you, Des. I appreciate that. Shredding was hip and cool back then. It was. I mean, you can still do it, and there's definitely a time for it. Like, you know, if you're gonna do the soundtrack to, like, Metal Gear Rising, you should be shredding. Are you going to go back and get the gear you missed? I missed several throughout all the levels. Um, I'm not sure, because again, I, this is not the first time I played this game. Even if I don't remember 100% of it. I love the spear ability, but I feel like I'm going to need one of these. Are you going to 100% extra mode? I'm not really sure I'm going to be 100%ing any of the game. I'm just going to enjoy it. And if I end up doing a little bit more, that's cool. Um, but yeah, I'm not really... I've never really been a 100% type gamer anyway. A little bit. Maybe, like, a couple games. I get it. Like, yeah, I've, I've 100 percent some Metroid games and Zeldas and stuff. Um, like platformers, like Donkey Kong 64, I, I did when I was younger. Uh, Banjo-Kazooie's not overly difficult to 100%. Is that Switch gonna...
worth it. Someone said they just 100% of Metroid Fusion. That's just a phenomenal game. Like, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I did that too when I, you know, first played it. There's a... I was gonna say... Are you gonna play Fusion? Again, I, I played it... It's already on the Full Sauce channel, like... I played it a couple years ago. And it was... it was awesome. I'm not... I'm not planning on replaying it, but it is... it is great. It's one of my favorites, but yeah, I just... I already have a playthrough of it up. Um, but someone made a Metroid... A Super Metroid remake... ...in the Metroid Zero Mission engine. I don't know if it's done, but I saw, like, footage of it. It looks cool. Super Metroid had four buttons, though. Well, they adapted it. So it still looks like Zero Mission. Like, it's basically Zero Mission with Super Metroid map layout. That's what it looked like to me from the footage. I mean, it does look cool, but... There were moments where some of the mood was, like, kind of removed a bit. Because the, um, the graphics are, are pretty different. So you say it's Super Metroid when it's obviously Zero Mission. Well, again, that's the intent. I mean, they even redid the music for Super Metroid on the GBA sound font. Which sounded a little crusty, to be honest, but... I guess it's a neat experiment. It's like, yeah, it could be done. So... Though, I, even though Super Metroid is probably, like, my third favorite game of all time, that's usually where I place it on my arbitrary list that means nothing, I would say that the controls are... Not as good as Zero Mission and Fusion. Like, it's a little floaty. I love it. I think, you know, it's just years of playing it. I think it's fine. But the kind of snappiness of the controls of those two GBA games is really, really great. Fear Doomer. Someone said, um, any plans to do Donkey Kong 94 eventually? That's another really good game. That I've only ever played by borrowing someone's cartridge.
Hal. Donkey Kong on Game Boy, correct, yes. It's... There's a Donkey Kong game released in 94, and it's like... You play as Mario. <laughs> it just came out in 1994, so it's called Donkey Kong 94. It's not like Donkey Kong 64. Oh, no, no! One day I would love a Kirby game to do what 64 did. Crystal Shards. I know I've talked about this, but like, the combining of the powers was one of my favorite mechanics in the whole series. Star Allies did- oh yeah, Star Allies did a couple things like that, that's right. It wasn't, like, the same thing. Squeak Squad had limited comboing, too? I didn't know that. But chat, what if you could combine three powers? Imagine how many combos they'd have to develop just to make that happen. Hundreds. Hundreds. Because, okay, what if it was six powers, right? Six powers. So six times six times six, what is that? That's 36 times six. Uh... Two hundred and sixteen, yeah. Even with just, like, six powers, it would be way too much. Maybe they could, like, develop some kind of algorithm? I mean, it's really- actually, combining three powers is kind of dumb. It's not even, like, a great idea. But I'm just saying, if maybe there's some way to, like... Like, Pokémon Infinite Fusion it. You know, like, an actual, like, good use of AI? Herb GPT. Chad, I gotta say, I, I know there are people that don't like South Park for whatever reason, fine. And they've been spicy and they kind of go after everyone. The, the new season has been, like, pretty good. Like, I've, I've, I've gotten more than a sensible chuck, chuckle out of it. Someone said, I don't like it. Well, noted, chat member. I appreciate your feedback. I would like to let you know that I appreciate that we can disagree and still remain friends. That's uh, a valuable thing. And I'm... I'm pleased. I'm pleased about that. We're enemies now. Oh, the misery! Everybody wants to be my enemy. But yeah, I absolutely don't expect everyone to to be into that show. But I, you know, I, I grew up watching it for better or worse. What did it do to me? I have no idea. Probably some stuff. But the new season has been pretty good. The, 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 uh, the last episode was one about 
how... I, again, I wouldn't say it's as good as the, you know, when it was at its best. Whatever time of your life you saw it when it was at its best, because there's been so many phases of the show. And, um... Again, you, you kind of can't take your... viewpoints from a cartoon show. In my opinion. I have left, and I have disagreed as much as the next person, uh, uh, in regards to South Park. Like, not everything that they make fun of is something that I immediately, just because I like the show, I can't believe I even have to say this. Like, but... Just so you know. Point is, the newest episode was... <laughs> uh, some of the kids writing their papers with ChatGPT and then replying to their girlfriends with ChatGPT. And then <laughs> Mr. Garrison grades the papers with ChatGPT because he gets so, like, he's just sick of it. And then they have, like, a shaman come in to try to, like, determine who's using it. And then they end up finishing the episode by writing a scenario in ChatGPT, and it's, like, terrible. Like, it's- it's actually... ...really funny. I don't know, some of you might enjoy it more than others. I noticed Trey's voice was a little fucked for the episode, I'm wondering if he was sick. But, uh... It was pretty funny, yeah, it was pretty funny. Again, I don't think they always hit. And, um, for years, South Park was, like, kind of in a weird place. It's like, I don't... You know, they were trying, like, this long-form shit. And, like, doing, like, continual, like... Whoa. Oh, stop that. They were doing, like, um... Serialized. Where everything kind of was, was part of this, like, overarching story. I didn't really think that worked. And I think that they were just kind of not sure where their footing was for a little while, in my opinion. But I like that this season has just been, like, they make fun of the royal family. In a funny way. They got the chat GPT thing. Um, Japanese toilets with bidets is a topic. But yeah, I just like random episodes about whatever whatever they're thinking that day. And that that has been um, at least for me, it's been a little bit better than what they were attempting previously. Someone said I watched six-hour video essay saying that Tegrity Farms was pe peak South Park. Oof. Yeah, I don't know about that. It wasn't... There were moments. I mean, there was still stuff I enjoyed. I haven't seen all of the episodes. Like, I've, that's not a show I've seen every episode of. But, listen. You can make a six-hour video essay. On anything. And if your editing is good, if you're persuasive enough, you can tell anyone that Metroid Other M is the best Metroid. And people could believe it, because there are people that want to watch this stuff, and some people are willing to see a viewpoint out. But if, you know, if you speak with enough authority, and you say, hey, this, this is, this is my, my opinion, and then six hours later, you're like, this is my conclusion. At least some people will be on board. I've- listen, I- I have bought into that. It's called Star Wars Prequel Reviews by Red Letter Media. <laughs> but I already knew that something was wrong in my mind. This just my- again, I know people love the prequels. There's plenty of people in my chat who love the prequels. That's fine. I- I enjoy them too in my own way. But... Those video essays were just really good, and really funny, and so I, it's, you know...
wing. Oh yeah, because if you get two. Also, there are times where you can't... I'm not, like, a filmmaker, and I couldn't articulate certain things. Whether it be about Star Wars or something else, sometimes you just can't articulate why something resonates with you. Or the opposite. And I like video essays. I do, and the older I get, I try to watch them a little bit more with an open mind and, and still retain my own viewpoint if I have one. But I also feel like sometimes it's nice when people who know a lot about a topic talk about the topic and, you know, and like you can see different ways to look at a situation or a thing. That's all. Sometimes, though, it is, it is tasty. Like, watching video essays about how Star Wars Episode Nine was absolute dog shit was, ta was quite tasty, and it made the ticket price worth it. Do you need an essay to know that? No, I knew in the theater, and I knew as soon as I was home, but I will tell you that watching... Like, the train wreck in slow motion made it much more fun. And it, like, actually kind of almost made the movie worth existing. Because I was, at that point, like... Like, I got entertainment out of it. There's a HAL room in this stage? Okay. I'll, I'll keep an eye out on the chat then. But also, viewpoints do change over the years. Like, I will tell you this, the Red Letter Media reviews the prequels. Mike is very harsh on the prequels. And he's harsh on some of the Star Trek movies, too, that I actually like. Like, I like First Contact. It's not that great of a movie, and Picard is like a different character. But I like it. I think Generations is pretty good, too, in its own weird way. So, I enjoy the, the reviews that he's done as Plinkett in the, you know, but these are reviews going back like 15 years now, or more. Things can change. I don't think episode one is a well-made movie. I think there's a lot of weird script stuff. I think it's like, you know, there's stuff that just doesn't make any sense to me. But I can't help but love that movie. I really... I enjoy it. <laughs> like, I'll watch it almost any time. That counts for something. So, someone said childish attachment? Maybe. But I've watched that movie with people who have never seen it before, and they also didn't love, you know, the Star Wars thing, and they thought it was, like, funny. So you can get that from it. Then again, the movie I've seen the most in my life is probably The Room, so I'm one to talk. But I guess what I'm trying to say is, yeah, video essays can sway your opinion. Maybe even alert you to things that you didn't notice that are kind of poop or good. But ultimately, it's up to you to make your own decisions. And I guess as things change, as you get older, opinions change and you learn more. And by the way, it's okay to change your opinion on things. I know that has almost on the internet become like a, oh, you're a hypocrite because you change your opinion on this thing. Well, sometimes with years, more information, sometimes with, like, life experience, your opinions change. I mean... I don't know, you'd hope so, at least, in some cases. But... I don't know why I'm turning this into... What were we talking about? What was the six-hour video essay about, chat? Tegrity Farms. Right, Tegrity Farms. Gotcha. It's the Kirby effect. It's happening again. Kirby always brings out the deepest of, of conversations in me. Any chance of more Donkey Kong Jungle Beat? 
I'm... I'm in no rush to play more of it, but I probably will. I'm, I'm almost 100% going to play more of it. You know, it's funny, I just assumed there was something up here. I didn't know this was going to be the HAL room. Damn it. Anyway, um, Vinny, are you going to do a Mario movie review discussion when it comes out? Yeah, for sure. Do a live stream from the theater? No, I don't think I want to do that. I'll, listen, I'll just talk about it. I'll do my usual thing. I know that, uh, speaking of video essays, I, some people are really good at it, and they can just do a full thing and then just edit out certain things, maybe come up with a, a script. You know there's going to be a lot of, like, scripted reviews, and those are going to be cool, too. But uh, I think I'm too lazy for that, or just not, that's not my, my thing, that's not in my wheelhouse. So I'm just going to, like, talk. So I'll watch the movie, come back, and then I'll just record like an hour of me, or, you know, half hour or whatever, of me telling you how much I liked it, or didn't like it, pros and cons, etc. But man, there's a part of me that wishes I, I was better at the video essay thing, or had the drive to do it. Because I watch a bunch of them. Like, I enjoy the format. Liam does good ones. I like Liam's approach, Liam Triforce. He has a good... He brings in his personal, like, memories of a thing, but also tries to explain, like, the process of the development. He'll share, like, his, um, his feelings on if he likes the thing or not. But then it also gets, like, kind of technical. So yeah, it's, I think he's got a good format. Whoa. Divinity, did you see Germa win the award? I didn't- I didn't watch it. I was- I was actually recording Mario Kart. With, um... A couple... Uh, creators that were not invited to the... The event, as well. <laughs> That'll be uploaded soon. But, uh, no, I didn't- I didn't watch it. But... I'm really happy for him. Someone said, poor Vinny can't even get invited. I don't want to wear a suit. I don't want to fly to LA.
If I was there already, sure. I, but I probably still wouldn't wear a suit. Ah, Metal General. I figured out why I press, um, X a lot to try to jump. I, I mean, we, there was the Smash Brothers connection, but it's more... During the levels, when I'm just platforming and not blocking as much, I don't think about pressing X to jump, but when I'm doing boss battles, it feels more like a Smash thing. And so my instinct is to press X to jump. What about pause for lore? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. I guess you could probably look it up online. I forgore about it, sorry. Welcome back, Kirby. From here, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump to Landia's mountain lair. The fearsome dragon lives at the far edge of... Alcandria, the very peak of a volcano surrounded by intense flames. The road from here just got a little bit rougher, but I'm sure you'll be just fine. Just hurry up and smash that dragon to smithereens. It's a ship. Um, yeah, the, the only reason I'm here is I, I want to, I want to do this. I gotta, yeah, I gotta keep up with my Kirby dailies, correct. I got this. There's a lot of Marxes in a row over there. I, I did not have a good reaction time here at all. Oh boy. Yeah, that one was 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 poop. All right then. Well, <laughs> yeah, never mind. Handheld mode, yeah, I know handheld mode would, would cut the delay time down, but also... Yeah. I probably... I probably still would suck at it. I mean, I did okay a couple times, but I, I don't think I would ever be, like, that good at that. I didn't even realize there was a whole other...
Yeah, we're not finishing this game tonight. For some reason, I thought we were finishing this game tonight. And then there's the extra mode. The new one, the Magalore mode, which I'd like to- oh, oh, no! It's only three levels. Okay, well, I do want to check out the new game mode as well, so we can do that at some point. Um, so chat, I haven't decided if I want to go to the room screening that Greg is doing commentary over. That is on Thursday. And, um, I've considered it. He- he invited me, but I don't know. I don't know if I want to do it. Bring spoons, yeah, right? Well, if I did go, obviously I wouldn't be streaming Thursday. I would probably stream tomorrow instead. Vinny, we will be disappointed if you don't go. Are any chat members going? Well, never mind. Um, every chat member is going, according to chat members. So never mind that. Yonkers doesn't exist, of course we can't go. Well, they have, um... They've got steamed hams not far from there. Vinny, what you say you've spent more time doing? Watching the room or taking shits? Taking shits in a room. My room. Are you referencing a Beach Boy song, chat member? Because if you are, that's a plus one. There are chat members saying they would be disappointed in me if I didn't go. I, I think that's... that's very kind of you. <laughs> Listen, my journey with weird, like, good-bad movies has been a weird one. Like, I don't really understand how... I like this. I like... This is a really interesting career path, but, I mean, the fact that, um, Rem Lazar wants to, like, hang out at some point and, you know, grab dinner and just talk, not for any content or whatever. The fact that he invited me to the, the room, uh, the, the room, the Rem Lazar screening. That in and of itself was wacky, but considering how much I've seen the room, like, actually being invited by Greg because he wants to, like, talk about his new movie. <laughs> it's so weird. It's so fucking weird. Like, I like it a lot, actually. I think it's... It's the exact career path that I want. <laughs> it's just so strange. Didn't you tweet saying you were going? I, I know, I just- I wasn't... I- yeah, I mean, I, I said I would, but then I wasn't sure. The other reason is, if I go, I have to miss out on band practice. I don't know if we can reschedule, and then with packs, that's less practice. And I have a new song that sounds like Tom Petty, and I really want to show the guys, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I would like to... 
would like to go and also maybe reschedule band practice, but schedules are tough for everyone. Do you play multiple instruments? Not really. Oh my god, oh my god. I... I can play the mandolin, but that's a stringed instrument. I play guitar and bass. I play a very poor drums. I can play a little bit of keyboard, but I'm much better at just... figuring it out on guitar and then programming it on, like, a synthesizer. But I'm very... I'm not great at keyboard. I can press one button. No, I can do chords. I just don't know where they are. I'm really bad at... Even on the guitar, I know where all the chords are, but I still don't know my scales all that well. <laughs> Do you know much music theory? This is a, a frequent conversation. And considering I never took music in school and never really had any lessons, I don't know music theory. And on one hand, I've tried. I've talked about it. I've watched some of Beato's videos. I've watched stuff online that might help. It just bores me to tears. I've tried. So I know a little bit, like just a kind of a little bit. But I do, I, I don't find it, because I don't like math. And there's some part of music theory that my brain associates with math. And I could be wrong, I could be just dumb. I am dumb. But... Huh? Well, uh, speaking of, yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't know a whole lot. But there is a part of me that finds the instrument kind of still a bit of a mystery which makes writing more fun, in a way. Though I will concede that is a viewpoint I've had when I was younger. I think music theory would be much better to know than not know it. Someone said it takes the fun out of it for me. It might do the same for me. I'm not sure if it would entirely, but I, I would like to know more. I'd like to know more. And I do pick up, like, bits and pieces from Bill or Joe or from something I've, like, figured out myself, or something, maybe, like, some video I watched. I learn a little bit here and there. Did I like Cracker Island? I thought it was okay. It was pretty good, yeah. Well, it, well, it's not my favorite Gorillaz album. I think the singles really stole the show for me, a lot of them. I think uh, some of the album tracks are pretty good, but they're not, like, great. That's just my thoughts. I'll tell you what. Silent Running and Skinny Ape are two of my favorite Gorilla songs ever. So that counts for something. And I do think Cracker Island's fun, and I like Possession Island a lot. So... So I like it, but it, yeah, I, I wouldn't say I like it better than Song Machine or Plastic Beach or anything like that. Oil was pretty good, yeah. I, maybe I need to listen to it more because it didn't really stick for me. But it's nice to hear Stevie Nicks. There's a good interview with Paul Simon and from The Clash, the bassist from The Clash. And, uh, it's the Rock on Tours podcast. 
and um, he talks a lot about, obviously, the Clash, but also he talks a lot about the Gorillas. And Good, the Bad, the Queen, which our project he did with Damon. Because he was their touring bassist for the Plastic Beach stuff. So, I just think that's a really good interview if you want to learn a little bit more about that era. No, no, he didn't talk about Garfunkel. This is not Paul Simon. It's Paul Simonon, or Paul Simonon. I'm not sure how you say it. Maybe Simonon? Though that would have been kind of a cool interview. If the bassist from The Clash talks about Garfunkel the whole time. What? Just casually freezing over a volcano, no problem. Oh my god. Tricky. Chad, have you ever grabbed a Bubalia and it feels like a bag of sand? How do you build a sand castle? Down, up, B. No! Oh, no, don't tell me I have to do the whole level again. No. I kept forgetting to, uh, block.
Oh, got sandcastled real hard. Like a bag of sand. God damn it. Yeah, if only Anakin knew that they felt like sand, maybe there, there wouldn't have been any problems. The stage is a new hell room. It's at the end of an escape sequence. Chat, is this like gaming? What I'm doing right now? Yeah. Wow, imagine that. I lost my sand ability and for what? No, we're good now. Now we're gaming. If only you could just hide in a sand pile your whole life, like Kirby could. I, Chad, I've told you about the time I buried my slipper. Right? Was it a slipper? Uh, like a thong? Not the booty th thongs. Like, uh, um... What are they called, chat? Like a flip-flop. A flip-flop. That you put on, on your feet when you go to the beach. Right? So, I was... I was a child. I don't know how old I was. Maybe eight? Nine, something like that. And chat room, let me tell you. I decided it would be a great idea to bury one of my sandals. Or flip-flops, or whatever you want to call them. And I was like, I'll, I'll definitely find it later. But only one of them I'll bury. So I buried it real good in uh, Wildwood, New Jersey, because of course it was. 
and I couldn't find it again. <laughs> and my parents were not happy about that. I dug so many holes at the end of that. Just try, like, it's like, okay, it's time to leave. Wait, I have to dig some more holes. Why? I, I can't tell you right now, but don't worry, it'll be fine. Awful pirate. Well, some say that that sandal is still there to this day. I was a dumb kid, you know that? Kind of a dumb adult, too. But I was a dumb kid as well. Yeah, but when when you're when you're young, you do tend to do some really weird things. It's like, why bury the sandal? Because it'll be fun. And I'll find it later, because there's no way I, I won't know where it is. That's one of those things that you... It's one of those things that you just voice crack. It's one of those things that I still remember. That's one of my few sand stories, that's why I brought that up, since we're talking about sand. Chat, where's this hell room? I thought I missed it. It turns out I just have to wait 84 seconds. Wait, wait, wait. 84 seconds? How do you say... Haru? In Japanese, that's 84. Haru? Oh, 86, 86, okay. Because of the year? I don't know. Whatever's happening. Chat's got a couple different things they're saying there, that's fine. It's a language pun? I figured, yeah. Yep. So we'll just be here. Cool. What's up, chat? Use this time to go find the flip-flop. Yeah. Oh, I found it! It was buried along with rum ham. That's weird. Has it been 84 seconds yet? Dredge at the end of the month, planning to play. Dredge... Is... Uh, yeah, I'll probably play it. It was a good game when I played the demo. I mean, the end of the month is gonna be... A lot of Resident Evil 4. 
But yeah, I'd like to get some dredge going too. What's dredge? Dredge is the um, eldritch Lovecraftian cosmic horror fishing game. I see those desserts up close, they look good. Who is Hal? Is it Hal Emmerich? Seriously, at this point, why even have lives? Like, <laughs> like the life system is so arbitrary when you have 87 of them. Hard mode? I guess so. God. Does anyone here remember Solomon Grundy? Solomon Grundy smash! He was kind of like, if, if I remember correctly, he was like a bootleg Hulk. He was in a show called The Super Friends. He was a zombie? He was a zombie Hulk. Okay, I didn't know that. It's been so long. I just remember him because I'm smashing right now, and, I, and that's like, uh... The first thing that comes to mind is a little... Various other types of things that smash. Face tank.
Okay. Ever played the Arkham games? Yeah, I played um, Arkham Asylum a little bit. It was good. I thought it was a good game. I didn't play too much of it, but I played maybe like a couple hours of it. And um, it was a friend's copy that I borrowed, and, and then I never finished it. The thing is... I was never a huge superhero person. So the appeal of the game was more like, oh, this is fun, as opposed to this is Batman. I do like the Batman a little bit, and I've, I've watched the movies, and, you know, the Christopher Nolan ones, of course, but uh, for some reason... Yeah, I just, just didn't play the whole game. But it was good. It's hard to believe that that's like... That first one came out, what? 13 years ago or so? 14 years ago? Because, like, visually I remember that being, like, just amazing. And recalling the visuals of the game now, I'm like, oh no, that's, that game looks incredible. There are remasters on PS4. Okay, I see. I didn't know that. Some games from the PS3 era, all they need is, is like a decent upscale with 60 FPS. I mean, textures too you could replace, but... I feel like um, these remasters, there's a lot of potential for just really basic kind of things, like throw them, get good lighting, upscale, 60 FPS, and some of these games that came out like even 15 years ago are still gonna look pretty good. I mean, it's been happening, like left and right anyway. But I do think some games need a little extra help. Metroid Prime, in my head, looked way better than I thought it did. It still looks great, but... To me, the remaster of that, and even this... ...were a lot more substantial than I thought they were. Your doom are done. But I like when um I like when older games get remastered and they only charge like ten dollars to get the remaster. <laughs> it's like well you paid for the game and we're only doing like a very rudimentary upscale and a couple other small things. So here's ten dollars. That's what, uh, yeah, when? Uh, never. That would be nice if that happened.
Quake. Well, Quake had a pretty good switch port with uh, gyro controls. Skyrim charged $50, $60 for its remaster. Yeah, and mods probably... They sent me a copy of that. That's why I ended up streaming it again. But, I mean, I thought it looked decent, but it didn't look substantially different. It wasn't $60 different. And then, yeah, it came with the DLC and some new stuff, but it was all, like, community-created stuff anyway. Listen, I was happy to play it again, because the stream of it ended up being fun. But... But there are times when, um... Fan-made mods look better than the, the official remaster. Like here, Square Enix releases Final Fantasy IX. They never claimed it was some kind of remaster. But, you know, they didn't try. With Chrono Cross, they were like, yeah, we, we got some new models, which is great. New models look good. They finally patched it so that it's actually running at a decent frame rate. Took a year, but okay, that's something. That Mogari mod for Final Fantasy IX, considering how the original backgrounds were lost, that is an astounding amount of work. And not just, like, put it through an AI and have it upscale it. Like, go hand... Like, um, by hand as well. And add some stuff, fix up some edges, like, for example, um, transparent edges. We're all fucked because of the AI upscaling. So they had to go back and do thousands of those by hand. And then using some processes that work better for certain areas and not others. It's a lot of work, but the fact that people can do that, and it's free, to me means a lot of these developers need to step the fuck up. Why can't we... Yeah, Neryl makes good textures. Texture packs and stuff. Not narrowed, narrow. But, um, yeah, I just think if you're competing with all of the people that can make stuff like that, like, for example, Resident Evil 4 upscale that that one fan did that went to location. Like, the actual locations where they filmed, or they photographed the textures. And he did the same thing, and then... ...spent years on his project. That's why I'm really happy Resident Evil 4 Remake... ...is going to be, like, different in a lot of ways. Because I don't want to spend $60 on just a HD texture thing, when Resident Evil 4 now... ...looks great. It always looked good, but now it looks, like, phenomenal. Like, seeing the, the new textures and, you know, upscaling and everything. So, I'm cool with Capcom taking some risks and trying some different things, because we already have a version of Resident Evil 4 that looks fucking phenomenal. A remaster is not a remake. Sometimes the lines blur, and truthfully, the, just the verbiage of remaster, remake, etc. It, it gets kind of confusing. But yeah, I, I agree. But Capcom, I think, did one of the best... What was it, a remaster? Was it a remake? I'm not even sure. Resident Evil 1. The GameCube one that got ported to PC. That's still probably one of the best I've ever seen in my life. Um, not only the lines blur, but some publishers use them interchangeably for marketing, adding to the confusion. Yeah, that's true, Johnny. That's very true. RE1 is a remake. It's, it's 
great. They did it twice. FF7 Remake is like the most misleading thing ever. Um, I think intentionally so. We'll see if it ends up, like, working in the end, but I'm interested in seeing the new story beats. Just to have some... Like, I get... I get what they were going for. Like, we want the audience to have some new surprises. That works for me, as long as the original is still, like, purchasable. And playable. <laughs> Someone said, I'm so tired about complaints of that. Yeah, I mean, there. listen, there's people in this chat right now that think Final Fantasy Remake is garbage. And I respect their opinion. I, I've had conversations with people who I really like, and I like their opinions on video games, and they don't like Remake. And I'm like, well, I enjoyed it. It wasn't perfect. It's a lot of dumb shit. But when it was good, I thought it was great. That sucked. But yeah, when it comes to like faithful remakes, you have stuff like this, which is like a enhanced remaster, I guess. <laughs> it's the deluxe version. Then you have what Metroid Prime did, which is similar to this, which is like everything was redone from almost from scratch, aside from the gameplay itself. But this adds more things, like there's a new game mode, there's the, the minigame stuff, like, that's been expanded. Metroid just changed some control options, and really made it, like, look as good as it could on Switch. So it, it gets so fucking confusing, it really is very, very confusing. And all I really want from, uh, ugh, from a remaster... ...is, like... You know, I want to be able to play the game again and have it look as good as I thought it did. Ocarina of Time 3D did a good job at that. But sometimes I, I like the idea of a complete reimagining of a game, too. It's like, shit, I'm, I'm down for that. The problem with Final Fantasy VII has been, anytime they've tried to tell a story in that world, it's been pretty dog shit. In my opinion. So, I don't really... I mean, it, I like Crisis Core. It's cheesy as fuck. I mean, you saw, I just played some of the, the, the remake. It is very, very, very cheesy. But I will say that at least the stuff with Zack and Sephiroth was kind of cool, but... I don't know. There is something about seeing, like, Jesse's backstory that really made me happy with that game. Like, learning more about her as a character and her family and stuff. It's like, that's the kind of stuff I want more of. I want- who's Biggs? Who's Wedge? We don't learn anything about these characters, usually, or, uh, in the original. Well. I'm not going to restart. Chat, please remind me, why do I need those anyway? Like, what do they unlock? Com 
completion. Just for 100%. Challenge stages. Oh, right, right, right. That's right. They do unlock challenge stages. That Waddle Doo, that massive Waddle Doo, was hiding a pizza trove. Worst game you've ever played legitimately. I don't know. That's a tough question because I don't know what legitimately means. I've played Sunday stream games that are absolute dog shit. Like hundreds of really, really terrible games. I mean, Action 52 is really bad. Burn Cycle was really bad. Mainstream? Worst mainstream game. Um... Well, that's different, too, because I've played Shovelware Showcase. Which, those are like mainstream- like, Eminem's kart racing is mainstream, I guess it was sold in stores. That's pretty bad. Jekyll and Hyde is not great. That's just too difficult of a question, because there are so many different ways to answer it. I don't really have a good one, I'm sorry. That's amazing. Something you legitimately hated. Um, I mean, DMC2 was, was bad. It was bad. It wasn't the worst thing I've ever played. I don't know, chat. My memory's not that great. I wish I had a good answer for you. I don't... I don't know if I do. Well, Snack World was pretty terrible. It wasn't, like... Jekyll and Hyde bad or anything like that. It was just... It was bad. And it didn't appeal to me at all, and I refunded it. But by no means was it, like, even Devil May Cry too bad. No, Other M's not that bad. Listen, I joke about Other M. There's a lot of things in that game that I hate. Stopping to shoot missiles. The find the pixel mini games in first person, using a tiny D-pad for exploration, um, the story of how Samus can't like be authorized to use her stuff. Like, there's a lot in that game that shit. There's some good stuff too, though. Like some of the exploration, I remember being pretty good. Some of the boss fights were good. The gameplay can actually get kind of okay. Some of the abilities are not terrible. Um, I remember there being some uh, okay songs. Like, Samus controls well for playing... Oh, damn. Samus controls pretty well for playing with a tiny D-pad. So, no, there's... It's not the worst game ever. It's just a shame that that's... I'm glad that that's no longer considered a main Metroid game. Apparently, it's a spin-off now. Oh, God. But by no means is it, 
like the worst game ever. I mean, Action 52 is a pretty strong contender. God damn it. I missed a bunch of them. Well, two is a bunch, I guess. Two of them. Yeah, RE6 was pretty bad. You know what? Again, there's some fun to be had in RE6, and there's almost like this weird... It is one of the best-selling Resident Evil games, and I watched some video about it, like, why people keep buying it. And, like, because it goes on sale a lot, and it's fun in co-op, I guess. But RE6 was a genuinely frustrating experience for me. It's just... Aside from, like, not... Wow. Aside from not being a Resident Evil game, because it's just an action schlock game, The things I hated most about that game, genuinely, like, could not wait for that game to be finished. It was too long. And it just kept getting, like, stupider. So that was my problem with Resident Evil 6. It did have some decent gunplay, though. Could have worked as a different game entirely, perhaps. But yeah, that's not a game I ever really want to play again. Five, I would play again. Five, I would play in co-op. Because I remember having fun playing that one in co-op. And I don't think five is all that great. I think it's, it's good. I think five is pretty bland, but pretty good. And really fun with, you know, when you're playing it together with someone. Even though you punch a boulder, but that's what everyone remembers. So. And even though I say I would play it again, I would probably only play the first two hours of it, and then I'd be like, yeah, I, I remember, I'm good. Landia. The four-headed guardian who sleeps in Haldera Volcano has been revered as this planet's protector since ancient times, so why is it awake now and looking this way so angrily? Eep. I mean, if this was Pokemon, the choice of getting leave... Sorry, Leafs, Leaves is the, the dumbest choice of all time, without a doubt. I didn't really use this ability a whole lot, so I wanted to check it out.
This was a bad choice. Be so tired. Just so tired. But where did they come from? They weren't here the whole time. Bravo, Kirby. You truly earned your reputation as a hero. Your help defeating Landia was invaluable. At long last, it's mine. <laughs> the source of limitless power, the master crown. Obtaining this crown has been my ultimate goal all along! What? What's with all the weird looks? Fine, let me explain everything. I fought Landia by myself and lost, so I fled the planet Popstar. That's when the thought struck me. I could have you defeat Landia for me. A stroke of genius, I know. You even helped me repair the Star Cutter. I really did appreciate that, by the way. Anyway, mwahaha, my time has come for your planet. The time has come for your planet. No, the time has come for the entire universe to bow down to me. And for being such a big help in all of this, your planet gets to go first. Prepare to bow, Popstar. Welcome your new overlord. Mahaha. It's like we, we just like leafed that enemy to death and now the enemy's like, oh, we'll help. Chat, can I stop this here? Like, does this go straight into the final boss or something? I forget. It goes straight into it. Um, only 20 minute, huh? Like, actually 20? Alright. Well, I mean, I'm still planning on checking out the other game mode on a separate occasion, but yeah, if this gave me the option, I probably would have uh, just quit out. But I'm not checking out the game mode tonight. That'll be another stream. Magalore's Money Shot? That's the name of the game mode? Oh.
I like the backgrounds. I also like that sometimes there's like space Doritos. It's like, hey, artists, we need a, a completely different dimension for this video game. What can you do? Space Doritos? Man. Now I gotta fight the ship that I helped rebuild. The lore star cutter now controlled by the traitor Magalore is being used as a weapon against Kirby and friends. If the shadowy ship has a mind of its own, had a mind of its own, how would it feel at this moment? Landia comes to the rescue in Planet Popstar. No, the entire universe is time of need. The dragon joins the battle with Team Kirby. Shields up. Was Wharf in there trying to do like ramming speed? Could have used your help back there, Meta Knight, you know. Rip. Um. I'll try it. I like this one a lot, Mecca. People are saying use leaf. A little too late. <laughs> Magalore is revealed as manipulative, as a manipulative mage who tricked Kirby and friends into fixing his ship and stole Halkandra's legendary treasure, the Master Crown. It's up to Kirby to save the universe. It's, it's Kirby. Skir it's Kirby. Actually, yeah, maybe should have chose something that was a little bit more able to attack things up. I mean, this is a pretty good move, but like half the arsenal is not going to work.
Oh no. I thought that was a like a fucking necessary thing that had to happen. I thought that was a cutscene, chat. Damn it. Well, uh, I can try again with sand. I was about to do it, Chad. I was about to do it. Oh, I forgot you have items too. Yeah, that's that's like extra cheesy. That's dangerously cheesy. Okay, this, this ability is, like, broken for this. Oh. Oh! I know I had healing. I just want to listen. I want to beat my baby game legitimately. Oh my god, I did it!
Oh man. Monster flame. No, I want it to beat legitimately with cheese sand. Chat. Come on, get over here. No damage. Give me the old Cleveland steamer. Just by sheer, like, force of will alone, Kirby is able to make that sword grow, like, four times its original size. sword again. How did I turn this 
thing on. This cur- Oh, you gotta just press- In order to let go, you gotta press select. I pressed- I was pressing the wrong button the whole time. Chat, why do I have sparkles under Kirby? Was that the whole game? Or did I, like, enable some kind of option? It's just this stage? Oh. I guess visibility is down when you're killing God. I really don't want to have to do this, but I also am going to do this. Okay. I only needed to use two healing items. That was either a no damage run or a two healing item run. Depending on your viewpoint. Twenty minute on the dot, was it? Yeah, it was actually. That was exactly twenty minutes. That's the first time that's happened, chat. The ship was good all along. Probably do the entire Magalore edition in like a two hour stream. Cool. Gonna do the extra mode. I will next time. I might do some challenges too. Do they ever explain why Meta Knight is Kirby's friend in this game? <laughs> like, 
Maybe I just missed something. They've always been friends, they're just rivals. Is basically what I'm getting from chat here. Which, yeah, I guess that makes sense, and that's something I knew, but... I mean, I fought this motherfucker thousands of times, it feels like. Great. All right, here's here's uh, the review. It was Kirby. Thanks for watching. Okay, here's the real review. I don't remember very much of Return to Dreamland other than I liked it. And yeah, it's a good Kirby game. I think they did a good job with the new visuals, adding a couple extras. It was Kirby. So, yeah, I enjoyed my time with it. And I'll be playing the extra mode. I'll let you know if I like that. But the main game is good. Um. If I wasn't streaming this, I don't know if I would have double-dipped and bought it. But because of the fact that people like and request Kirby games from me, I was like, yeah, well, yeah, I'm gonna play it. And I'm really happy I did, because these games are fun. And they make me happy on some level, so... Obviously, if you want the extra difficulty, you have to get to the end. Like, I had to use the two health potions. Otherwise, we would have been here another 10, 20 minutes. Um, and then there's the arena stuff, which is always very difficult. But Kirby games, you know what you're getting. You're going to get some base level of quality. And... You know if you like them. And even though I do end up just talking a lot of shit, and, like, bullshitting, and, you know, going into weird conversations while I play Kirby games, in some ways, it's because my brain is occupied in a good way. And I'm able to then chat. Because, you know, it's, you know, some of this is kind of low effort. You don't really have to think too much about, like, your every move. But it's nice to have that. Every now and then. I don't always want, like, a Dark Souls type game. I'm not great at video games. <laughs> I like both. I like both types of games. I like lots of different types of games. I like chill games. I like games that are a little bit more involved. It just depends on what mood I'm in. And uh, Kirby scratches a very specific itch. And he's cute. What can you say? Kirby's cute. Everyone loves Kirby. I question those that don't love Kirby. But he's so angry on the box art. Yeah. Well, only in America. Not anymore? Well, that's nice. It's nice that Kirby has calmed down a bit. Anger is, is a poison. It's true. The problem with it... ...is it only poisons you. Well, that's not true, that can poison everyone, but, you know. Joy is a poison too, says a chat member. Interesting viewpoint. I have to think about that a little bit, maybe it is. I'll have to think about that a bit. 
That was just a loud chord. It's fine. All right, so goodbye, Kirby, DDD, Bandana D, and Meta Knight. It was fun for a while there, but there's more. Extra. The arena. Magalore epilogue. Okay, chat. Yeah, we've we've got some more Kirby Kirby to do. Kirbin. But hey, we'll do that next time. Thank you for watching, everybody. I'm gonna get going. I hope you had a good night. I appreciate you being here as always. And um, yeah, the uh, what you call it game was good. Sorry, we're open. I'll be playing more of that. I don't know when I'm going to do Jungle Beat, but it'll happen, for sure. And uh, we'll continue Curb as, as the time comes. So, thank you all very much. Uh, have a great night, have a good day, whatever it is for you. Even if it's not any of those things. Maybe you live in some kind of void. Whatever you do, hope it's alright. Just remember, though, <laughs> joy is a poison, according to that chat member, so... That's pretty cool, I guess. Good night. See you next time. This is I eat. I have to eat. I meet.